Today in Isaiah, we get what it was known in Israel as the Jubilee year. And as the tradition went, every seven years, they called a Jubilee year a year to let things rest, to let the fields go fallow so that there could be a restoration of all creation. Jesus will use this Jubilee year as his inaugural address of what he's going to be about in his life and memory. To liberate. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me that I bring glad tidings. And we're called on this Feast of Gaudete Sunday to get caught up in that Spirit that caught him. That fell upon him. That it would fall upon us. And that we would get caught into the Jubilee. Because if you look at his life in ministry, he embodied a jubilee of healing and restoration for all of creation. Maybe we look at, could look at COVID with all the tragedy, despite that, as a call to a year of jubilee this Advent. That maybe creation is, I'm not a scientist, but maybe creation is healing as we've allowed the fields to go fallow that the earth is being restored. Certainly the Lord didn't intend it, but how do we look at this as a jubilee of joy and healing and a new beginning for our world? Pope Francis, speaking of the COVID, had this to say. He says to us, God always forgives. We sometimes forgive. But the earth never forgives. And in a sense, the earth needs to recreate itself. We hear today of John's shout in the wilderness. that We would prepare a way for the Lord. In this Advent, the wilderness reminds us that we go to where is undomesticated and undomesticatable to grow and explore, to discover that wild part of ourself that God wants to allow to grow and flourish and bloom in the desert. Anything about wilderness, anything about all that's happened around the election, all that's happened with the pandemic, I think we can all agree that in this time our lives have been very chaotic. And we don't deny the chaos. I'm reminded of Friedrich Nietzsche, who was a sort of like a John the Baptist for the last century, because he was a dark prophet, and he could see into the future because of the way the world was going, that we would see tragedy and wars like never before. And we would see World War I, World War II, Vietnam, all of that, that Nietzsche could, could see on the horizon. But he had something to say to give us hope about the future, despite the chaos. Nietzsche said, it takes a little chaos to give birth to a dancing star. Let's hope that this chaos is giving birth to something. Let's pay attention to what that birthing is of a new beginning. We are living in turbulent times, I believe. We're going through a major paradigm shift as a church and society. And in both the church and society, some people don't want to move to that new paradigm. Even some of the leaders in our own church are stuck in a paradigm of the Middle Ages and not facing up like our Pope is calling us to what's happening in in the contemporary world. We need to take up the challenge to move with that paradigm shift into something more and a new beginning, I believe. Let's hang on for the ride. We're on the turbulent end of evolution. I think we need to pay especially 
close in the midst of this chaos what the Lord is birthing in us. Listen to Mary's magnificent, lifting up the lowly, crushing the mighty. It's a paradigm shift. We're crossing a bridge. The Baptist and Mary and Jesus is showing us we're crossing a bridge into something new. And as Mary says, it's an overturning and it's a revolution. And will we ride the revolution? As Thessalonians says, let's not quench the spirit as we cross that bridge. Let's not hit the brakes, but let's hit the gas. Pay attention to the prophetic word coming to birth in us, within us. And where's the joy? The joy in rejoicing on this great Sunday is the Lord wants to give us a dream for all of creation. To pay attention to it. Let's see it. This is what we're called to do, I believe. Let's not be sour pusses like the religious authorities who want to silence the Baptist, who feel threatened by his call to change. They don't want a paradigm shift. They don't want to cross the bridge that humanity is being called to in Israel. They don't want to enter a new order. They refuse to be overtaken by the stronger one this Advent and be baptized in the Spirit. Our disposition must be one of humility and awe if we want to be immersed and absorbed in the Spirit. I like to share um, another Advent prophet. Last week I talked about Alfred Delp. But this week I'd like to share about Teilhard de Chardin, who lived in turbulent times. He was a chaplain in the trenches at World War I and a priest. And he felt like he was on the end of something turbulent. And as, as chaotic and all the tragedy he was seeing, he felt he could see eventually humanity on the cusp of something great. And despite all the tragedy he saw, he, despite all the tragedy he saw, he believed that humanity had a new beginning. And so he developed a whole theology based upon evolution, that we have to believe in the future of humanity and trust in the slow work of God. And so as, as turbulent as it is, as, as fast as maybe sometimes we are called to move, at the same time, the paradox is we're called to slow down and allow the Lord in this wilderness, as we cross this bridge, to create something new in us. And this is what Teilhard says. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything. To reach the end without delay, we should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability and that it may take a very long time. And so it is, I think, with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what time, that is to say grace and circumstances, acting on your own goodwill will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. Be patient. Hold on to your seats. We all need to. It's turbulent. But let's not forget to enjoy the ride. Let's be able to look 
back at this advent in the future and say, wow, what a ride.